important. Amen? Uh, so I just want you to get the picture that if you're one of God's, you'll, he, he'll never not find you. He'll never not be able to call you and you recognize his voice instantly. There never will be a time when you're too far away from him because he'll send that sheepdog after you <laughs> and come and get you. <laughs> Though I make my bed in hell, thou art there. And so Jesus is just so wonderful. And he says, I come to give you life and life more abundant, life overflowing, life that is so different from anything else that anyone can have. And Stan stands out like a beacon in that rehabilitation center because he's got the life of God inside him. And they just are amazed at him. We, when we have life, can have everything. And that is what Jesus came to do. And he said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. And on Good Friday, we realize that Jesus, the only reason we have all these benefits in God is because Jesus laid down his life for us. And he did so many wonderful things for us on the cross and to give us life and life more abundant. Okay, now I want you to turn to John chapter 15. And the reason I've chosen this chapter is because the fruit of the vine, the grapes, are come because of the abundance of life in the vine and the fruit is the result of the abundance of life. And so when Jesus talks about himself being the vine and we're the, bran we're the branches and we bear much fruit, it's because of the um, abundant life that courses through our veins that the fruit actually grows. Amen? So um, Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. And he's, he's saying there, I am the best vine. What he means by saying the true vine is, God has specially picked this vine. It's the best one. It's the most healthy. It's the strongest. It's the one that's going to produce the most fruit. It's the most excellent vine so G jesus says i am the true vine i'm the best vine i'm the one that's going to give such healthy uh, growth to the to the branches i am the true vine and my father is the husbandman he's the gardener he's the expert he's the one that's going to do the trimming he's the one that's going to but he's not going to make a mess like i do when i try and <laughs> prune my roses <laughs> they look a bit lopsided after I've finished but not when God does it he is the expert and he knows exactly where to cut and what to do amen he's the best source of life there could be He's, it's hand-picked. He's hand-picked by the Father who is the most skilled gardener. In his hands, if we abide in the vine, if we have the life of God inside, Father will see to it that we will bear much fruit. He is the expert. Amen. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit. So one of the things that God does is he cuts off the dead wood because the dead wood would absorb some of the life and just ca cause straggly branches to uh, set off out into the distance and there would be very little fruit on the end. So off go the dead wood, out it goes. I think it's a bit like uh, when 
the angels come and they do the reaping and they, uh, God said let the two grow together and then when the, tear, the tears are taken up by the angels. Now this is a similar idea where God just cuts off the dead wood. Cuts it off like that. And then he prunes. Now he, pruning means it cuts it right back to the nearest bud that will grow and produce a beautiful bunch of grapes. And he purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit. So it's so that it, we bring forth more fruit. So that the abundant life will be more evident. So that when the fruit comes forth out of us, when God's life is abundantly there in us, then the fruit will come out much more abundantly. And those who are around us will be able to feed off it. Those who are around us will be able to see that it's there. Those who are around us will be able to know that we are his disciples. And then Jesus says now, and he's trying to prepare the disciples for the fact that he's leaving them and that he's going and he's going to be... Um, He's going to be taken from them. And he says, Now are you clean through the word which I have spoken unto you? The water of the word washes us. And um, in Ephesians 5, 26, we read about this. How, Jesus is, uh, how um, Jesus, Christ loved the church in verse 25. And gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it by the washing of the water of the word. That he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. But that it should be holy and without blemish. And here Jesus is talking about the washing of the water of the word. You say, well, what about um, Peter? He, after this, he um, betrayed Jesus. How Was he clean through the water of the word? Jesus was talking about after resurrection, after his ascension, after Pentecost, that those things would be there for them. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, 